Zanzong, Chinese, Zanzang Pinyin, Zanzong, Wade Giles, Suan Sang, Ensa, Florida. C. 602 664 was a Chinese Buddhist monk, scholar, traveler, and translator who traveled to India in the 7th century and described the interaction between Chinese Buddhism and Indian Buddhism during the early Tang dynasty. During the journey, he visited many sacred Buddhist sites in what are now Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bangladesh. He was born in what is now Henan Province around 602. From boyhood, he took to reading religious books, including the Chinese classics and the writings of ancient sages. While residing in the city of Luoyang in Henan in central China, Zanzong was ordained as a Shramanera novice monk at the age of 13. Due to the political and social unrest caused by the fall of the Sui Dynasty, he went to Chengdu in Sichuan, where he was ordained as a Bisu full monk at the age of 20. He later traveled throughout China in search of sacred books of Buddhism. At length, he came to Chang'an, then under the peaceful rule of Emperor Taizong of Tang, where Zanzong developed the desire to visit India. He knew about Faxian's visit to India and, like him, was concerned about the incomplete and misinterpreted nature of the Buddhist texts that had reached China. He became famous for his 17-year overland journey to India, including Nalanda, which is recorded in detail in the classic Chinese text Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, which in turn provided the inspiration for the novel Journey to the West written by Wu Chengin during the Ming Dynasty, around nine centuries after Zanzang's death. Topic. Nomenclature, orthography and etymology Less common romanizations of Zong Zong include Yun Tisan, H. Wen Quan, Huan Thong, Huan Sang, Huan T. Siang, Xun Sang, H. Sian Sang, Suan Chiwang, Huan Chiwang, Suan T. Siang, Wen Thong, Suan Chiwang, Huan Quan, Zan Kang, Zan Zhang, Xuan Shang, Yuan Chong, Yuan Chiwang, and Yuan Chiwang. Suan, Huan, Huan and Chuang are also found. The sound written X in Pinyin and HS in Wade Giles, which represents the S or Shish like in today's Mandarin, was previously pronounced as the H like X in early Mandarin, which accounts for the archaic transliterations with H. Another form of his official style was Yuan Zhang, written Yuan Zhang. It is this form that accounts for such variants as Yuan Chong, Yuan Chiwang, and Yuan Chiwang, Tang Monk, Tang Sang, is also transliterated, Thang Sang. Another of Zanzang's standard aliases is Sanzang Fashi, simplified Chinese, San Kang Fashi, traditional Chinese, San Kang Fashi, Pinyin, Sanzang Fashi, literally, Sanzang Dharma or Law Teacher. Fa being a Chinese translation for Sanskrit, Dharma, or Pali, Pakrit Dhamma, the implied meaning being. Buddhism. Sanzang is the Chinese term for the Buddhist canon, or Tripitaka, and in some English language fiction and English translations of Journey to the West, Zanzang is addressed as Tripitaka. <laughs> Early life Zanzang was born Chen Wei or Chen Yi around 602 in Chenhe village, Gushi town Chinese, Go Shi Zhen Luazao near present-day Luoyang, Henan and died on 5 February 664 in Yuha Palace, Yuhua Gong in present-day Tongchuan, Shaanxi. His family was noted for its erudition for generations, and Zanzang was the youngest of four children. His ancestor was Chen Shi, Shane Shi 104-186, a minister of the Eastern Han dynasty. His great-grandfather Chen Qin, Shen Qin served as the prefect of Shangdang, Shangdang present-day Changzi, Shangxi during the Eastern Wei. His grandfather Chen Kong, Shane Kong was a professor in the Taishu Wei Imperial Academy during the Northern Qi. His father Chen Wei, Shane Wei was a conservative Confucian who served as the magistrate of Jiangling County during the Sui dynasty, but later gave up office and withdrew into seclusion to escape the political turmoil that gripped China towards the end of the Sui. According to traditional biographies, Zanzang displayed a superb intelligence and earnestness, amazing his father by his careful observance of the Confucian rituals at the age of eight. Along with his brothers and sister, he received an early education from his father, who instructed him in classical works on filial piety and several other canonical treatises of Orthodox Confucianism. Although his household was essentially Confucian, at a young age, Zanzang expressed interest in becoming a Buddhist monk like one of his elder brothers. 
After the death of his father in 611, he lived with his older brother Shane Su Chinese, Shane Su later known as Zhang Jie Chinese, Zhang Jie for five years at Jingtu Monastery Chinese, Jingtu Si in Luoyang, supported by the Sui state. During this time he studied Mahayana as well as various early Buddhist schools, preferring the former. In 618, the Sui dynasty collapsed and Zanzong and his brother fled to Chang'an, which had been proclaimed as the capital of the Tang dynasty, and thence southward to Chengdu, Sichuan. Here the two brothers spent two or three years in further study in the monastery of Kong Wei, including the Abhidharma Kosa Sastra. When Zanzong requested to take Buddhist orders at the age of 13, the abbot Zheng Shangguo made an exception in his case because of his precocious knowledge. Zanzong was fully ordained as a monk in 622, at the age of 20. The myriad contradictions and discrepancies in the texts at that time prompted Zanzong to decide to go to India and study in the cradle of Buddhism. He subsequently left his brother and returned to Chang'an to study foreign languages and to continue his study of Buddhism. He began his mastery of Sanskrit in 626, and probably also studied Tocharian. During this time, Zanzong also became interested in the metaphysical Yogacara school of Buddhism. Pilgrimage In 627, Zanzong reportedly had a dream that convinced him to journey to India. Tang China and the Gokturks were at war at the time and Emperor Taizong of Tang had prohibited foreign travel. Zanzong persuaded some Buddhist guards at Yumun Pass and slipped out of the empire through Liangzhou Gansu and Qinghai in 629. He subsequently traveled across the Gobi Desert to Kumul modern Hami city, thence following the Tian Shan westward. He arrived in Turpan in 630. Here he met the king of Turpin, a Buddhist who equipped him further for his travels with letters of introduction and valuables to serve as funds. The hottest mountain in China, the Flaming Mountains, is located in Turpin and was depicted in the journey to the west. Moving further westward, Zanzong escaped robbers to reach Karasar, then toward the non-Mahayana monasteries of Kucha. Further west he passed Aksu before turning northwest to cross the Tian Shan's Bidel Pass into modern Kyrgyzstan. He skirted Isak Kul before visiting Tokmak on its northwest, and met the great Kagan of the Gokturks, whose relationship to the Tang Emperor was friendly at the time. After a feast, Zanzong continued west then southwest to Tashkent, capital of modern Uzbekistan. From here, he crossed the desert further west to Samarkand. In Samarkand, which was under Persian influence, the party came across some abandoned Buddhist temples and Zanzong impressed the local king with his preaching. Setting out again to the south, Zanzong crossed a spur of the Pamirs and passed through the famous Iron Gates. Continuing southward, he reached the Amu Darya and Termez, where he encountered a community of more than a thousand Buddhist monks. Further east he passed through Kunduz, where he stayed for some time to witness the funeral rites of Prince Tardu, who had been poisoned. Here he met the monk Dharmasimha, and on the advice of the late Tardu made the trip westward to Balk modern Afghanistan, to see the Buddhist sites and relics, especially the Nava Vihara, which he described as the westernmost Vihara in the world. Here Zanzong also found over 3,000 non-Mahayana monks, including Prajnakara Ban Ruo Jie Luo or Wei Xing, a monk with whom Zanzong studied early Buddhist scriptures. He acquired the important text of the Mahavibhasa Chinese, Da Pai Po Sha Lun here, which he later translated into Chinese. Prajñakara then accompanied the party southward to Bamyan, where Zanzong met the king and saw tens of non-Mahayana monasteries, in addition to the two large Buddhas of Bamyan carved out of the rock face. The party then resumed their travel eastward, crossing the Shabar Pass and descending to the regional capital of Kapisi about 60 kilometers 37 miles north of modern Kabul, which sported over 100 monasteries and 6,000 monks, mostly Mahayana. This was part of the fabled old land of Gandhara. Zanzong took part in a religious debate here, and demonstrated his knowledge of many Buddhist schools. Here he also met the first Jains and Hindu of his journey. He pushed on to Adinapur later named Jalalabad and Lagman, where he considered himself to have reached India. The year was 630. Topic. India Zanzong left Adinapur, which had few Buddhist monks, but many stupas and monasteries. 
His travels included, passing through Hunza and the Khyber Pass to the east, reaching the former capital of Gandhara, Purushapura Peshawar, on the other side. Peshawar was nothing compared to its former glory, and Buddhism was declining in the region. Zanzang visited a number of stupas around Peshawar, notably the Kanishka stupa. This stupa was built just southeast of Peshawar, by a former king of the city. In 1908, it was rediscovered by D. B. Spooner with the help of Zanzang's account. Zanzang left Peshawar and travelled northeast to the Swat Valley. Reaching Adhyana, he found 1,400-year-old monasteries, that had previously supported 18,000 monks. The remnant monks were of the Mahayana school. Zanzang continued northward and into the Bunner Valley, before doubling back via Shabazz Gari to cross the Indus River at Hund. He visited Taxila which was desolate and half-ruined, and found most of its Sangaramas still ruined and desolate with the state having become a dependency of Kashmir with the local leaders fighting amongst themselves for power. Only a few monks remained there. He noted that it had some time previously been a subject of Kapisa. He went to Kashmir in 631 where he met a talented monk Samhayasas, Sang Jha Ye Shi and studied there. In Kashmir, he found himself in another center of Buddhist culture and describes that there were over 100 monasteries and over 5,000 monks in the area. Between 632 and early 633, he studied with various monks, including 14 months with Vanithaprabha Pai Ni Duo Bo La Po or Diao Fu Guang, 4 months with Kandravarman Zan Da Luo Fa Mo or Yu Wei, and a winter and half a spring with Jayagupta. Du ye ju du. During this time, Zanzang wrote about the Fourth Buddhist Council that took place nearby, ca. 100 AD, under the order of King Kanishka of Kushana. He visited Chiniot and Lahore as well and provided the earliest writings available on the ancient cities. In 634, Zanzang arrived in Matipura, Mo Di Bu Luo known as Mandawar today. In 634, he went east to Jalandhar in eastern Punjab, before climbing up to visit predominantly non-Mahayana monasteries in the Kulu Valley and turning southward again to Bharat and then Mathura, on the Yamuna River. Mathura had 2,000 monks of both major Buddhist branches, despite being Hindu-dominated. Zanzang travelled up the river to Shruna, also mentioned in the works of Yudhiyotakara, before crossing eastward to Matipura, where he arrived in 635, having crossed the river Ganges. At Matipura Monastery, Zanzang studied under Maitrasena. From here, he headed south to Sankasya Kapitha, then onward to Kanauj, the grand capital of the Empire of Harsha under the northern Indian Emperor Harsha. It is believed he also visited Govashan present-day Kashapur in the Harsha era. In 636, Zanzang encountered 100 monasteries of 10,000 monks both Mahayana and non-Mahayana, and was impressed by the king's patronage of both scholarship and Buddhism. Zanzang spent time in the city studying early Buddhist scriptures, before setting off eastward again for Ayodhya Saketa, homeland of the Yogacara school. Zanzang now moved south to Kasambi Kosam, where he had a copy made from an important local image of the Buddha. Zanzang now returned northward to Srivasti Barach, travelled through Terai in the southern part of modern Nepal here he found deserted Buddhist monasteries and thence to Kapilavasta, his last stop before Lumbini, the birthplace of Buddha. In 637, Zanzang set out from Lumbini to Kasinagara, the site of Buddha's death, before heading southwest to the Deer Park at Sarnath where Buddha gave his first sermon, and where Zanzang found 1,500 resident monks. Traveling eastward, at first via Varanasi, Zanzang reached Vaisali, Pataliputra Patna, and Bodh Gaya. He was then accompanied by local monks to Nalanda, the greatest Indian university of Indian state of Bihar, where he spent at least the next two years. He visited Champa Monastery, Bagalpur. He was in the company of several thousand scholar monks, whom he praised. Zanzang studied logic, grammar, Sanskrit, and the Yogacara school of Buddhism during his time at Nalanda. Rene Grauset notes that it was at Nalanda wherein Azure pool winds around the monasteries, adorned with the full-blown cups of the blue lotus, the dazzling red flowers of the lovely kanaka hang here and there, and outside groves of mango trees offer the inhabitants their dense and protective shade." That Zanzang met the venerable Silabhadra, the monastery's superior. Silabhadra had dreamt of Zanzang's arrival and that it would help spread far and wide the holy law. Grouset writes. 
The Chinese pilgrim had finally found the omniscient master, the incomparable metaphysician who was to make known to him the ultimate secrets of the idealist systems. The founders of Mahayana idealism, Asanga and Vasubandhu. Dignaga. Dharmapala had in turn trained Silabhadra. Silabhadra was thus in a position to make available to the Sino-Japanese world the entire heritage of Buddhist idealism, and the Sidi Zanzang's great philosophical treatise less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as none other than the summa of this doctrine the fruit of 7 centuries of indian buddhist thought from nalanda zanzang traveled through several kingdoms including pundranagara to the capital of pundravadana identified with modern mahasthangar in present day bangladesh there zanzang found 20 monasteries with over 3000 monks studying both the hinayana and the mahayana one of them was the Vasiba Monastery where he found over 700 Mahayana monks from all over East India. He also visited Samapura Mahavihara at Paharpur in the district of Naugon, in modern-day Bangladesh. Zanzang turned southward and travelled to Andradisa to visit the Viharas at Amaravati and Nagarjunakanda. He stayed at Amaravati and studied Abhidhamapitakam. He observed that there were many Viharas at Amaravati and some of them were deserted. He later proceeded to Kanchi, the imperial capital of Pallavas and a strong center of Buddhism. He continued traveling to Nasik, Ajanta, Malwa. From there he went to Multan and Pravada before returning to Nalanda again. At the invitation of Hindu king Kumar Bhaskar Varman, he went east to the ancient city of Pragjyotishpura in the kingdom of Kamarupa after crossing the Karatoya and spent three months in the region. Before going to Kamarupa he visited Silhet what is now a modern city of Bangladesh. He gives detailed account about culture and people of Silhet. Later, the king escorted Zanzang back to the Kanauj at the request of King Harshavadana, who was an ally of Kumar Bhaskar Varman, to attend a great Buddhist assembly there which was attended by both of the kings as well as several other kings from neighboring kingdoms, Buddhist monks, Brahmins and Jains. King Harsha invited Zanjang to Kumbh Mela in Prayag where he witnessed King Harsha's generous distribution of gifts to the poor. After visiting Prayag he returned to Kanauj where he was given a grand farewell by King Harsha. Traveling through the Khyber Pass of the Hindu Kush, Zanzang passed through Kashgar, Khotan, and Dunhuang on his way back to China. He arrived in the capital, Chang'an, on the seventh day of the first month of 645, 16 years after he left Chinese territory, and a great procession celebrated his return. <laughs> return to China On his return to China in AD 645, Zanzang was greeted with much honor but he refused all high civil appointments offered by the still reigning emperor, Emperor Taizong of Tang. Instead, he retired to a monastery and devoted his energy in translating Buddhist texts until his death in AD 664. According to his biography, he returned with over 600 Mahayana and Hinayana texts, seven statues of the Buddha and more than a hundred Sarira relics. In celebration of Zanzang's extraordinary achievement in translating the Buddhist texts, Emperor Gaozong of Tang ordered renowned Tang calligrapher Chu Sulang Chu Sui Liang and inscriber Wan Wenzhao Wen to install two steel stones, collectively known as the Emperor's Preface to the Sacred Teachings, Yan Ta Sheng Zhao Shu at the Giant Wild Goose Pagoda. Topic. Chinese Buddhism influence. During Zanzang's travels, he studied with many famous Buddhist masters, especially at the famous center of Buddhist learning at Nalanda. When he returned, he brought with him some 657 Sanskrit texts. With the emperor's support, he set up a large translation bureau in Chang'an present-day Xi'an, drawing students and collaborators from all over East Asia. He is credited with the translation of some 1,330 fascicles of scriptures into Chinese. His strongest personal interest in Buddhism was in the field of Yogacara, Yu Jia Xing Pai or consciousness only. Why? The force of his own study, translation and commentary of the texts of these traditions initiated the development of the Fashang school Fashang Zong in East Asia. Although the school itself did not thrive for a long time, its theories regarding perception, consciousness, karma, rebirth, etc. found their way into the doctrines of other more successful schools. 
Zanzang's closest and most eminent student was Kuiji, Kuiji who became recognized as the first patriarch of the Fashang school. Zanzang's logic, as described by Kuiji, was often misunderstood by scholars of Chinese Buddhism because they lacked the necessary background in Indian logic. Another important disciple was the Korean monk Wanchuk. Zanzang was known for his extensive but careful translations of Indian Buddhist texts to Chinese, which have enabled subsequent recoveries of lost Indian Buddhist texts from the translated Chinese copies. He is credited with writing or compiling the Cheng Waishi Lun as a commentary on these texts. His translation of the Heart Sutra became and remains the standard in all East Asian Buddhist sects, as well, this translation of the Heart Sutra was generally admired within the traditional Chinese gentry and is still widely respected as numerous renowned past and present Chinese calligraphers have penned its texts as their artworks. He also founded the short-lived but influential Fashang school of Buddhism. Additionally, he was known for recording the events of the reign of the northern Indian emperor, Harsha. The Perfection of Wisdom Sutra Zanzang returned to China with three copies of the Mahaprashnaparamita Sutra. Zanzang, with a team of disciple translators, commenced translating the voluminous work in 660 CE, using all three versions to ensure the integrity of the source documentation. Zanzang was being encouraged by a number of his disciple translators to render an abridged version. After a suite of dreams quickened his decision, Zanzang determined to render an unabridged, complete volume, faithful to the original of 600 chapters. <inaudible> Autobiography and biography In 646, under the emperor's request, Zanzang completed his book Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, Da Tang Shi Yu Ji which has become one of the primary sources for the study of medieval Central Asia and India. This book was first translated into French by the sinologist Stanislas Julian in 1857. There was also a biography of Zanzang written by the monk Huili. Weili. Both books were first translated into English by Samuel Beale, in 1884 and 1911 respectively. An English translation with copious notes by Thomas Waters was edited by T. W. Rhys Davids and S. W. Bushell, and published posthumously in London in 1905. <laughs> Legacy Zanzang's work, The Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, is the longest and most detailed account of the countries of Central and South Asia that has been bestowed upon posterity by a Chinese Buddhist pilgrim. While his main purpose was to obtain Buddhist books and to receive instruction on Buddhism while in India, he ended up doing much more. He has preserved the records of political and social aspects of the lands he visited. His record of the places visited by him in Bengal mainly Raktamurtika near Karnasavarna, Pundranagara and its environs, Samatata, Tamarlipti and Harakela, have been very helpful in the recording of the archaeological history of Bengal what is now. His account has also shed welcome light on the history of 7th century Bengal, especially the Gada kingdom under Shashanka, although at times he can be quite partisan. Zanzang obtained and translated 657 Sanskrit Buddhist works. He received the best education on Buddhism he could find throughout India. Much of this activity is detailed in the companion volume to Xiyug, the biography of Zanzang written by Huili, entitled The Life of Zanzang. His version of the Heart Sutra is the basis for all Chinese commentaries on the sutra, and recitations throughout China, Korea and Japan. His style was, by Chinese standards, cumbersome and overly literal, and marked by scholarly innovations in terminology, usually, where another version by the earlier translator Kumarajiva exists, Kumarajivas is more popular. Topic in fiction Zanzang's journey along the so-called Silk Road, and the legends that grew up around it, inspired the Ming novel Journey to the West, one of the great classics of Chinese literature. The fictional counterpart Tang Sanzang is the reincarnation of the Golden Cicada, a disciple of Gautama Buddha, and is protected on his journey by three powerful disciples. One of them, the monkey, was a popular favorite and profoundly influenced Chinese culture and contemporary Japanese manga and anime including the popular Dragon Ball and Sayuki series, and became well known in the West by Arthur Whaley's translation and later the cult TV series Monkey. In the Yuan dynasty, there was also a play by Wu Changeling Wu Chongling about Zanzang obtaining scriptures. 
Topic relics A skull relic purported to be that of Zanzong was held in the Temple of Great Compassion, Tianjin until 1956 when it was taken to Nalanda, allegedly by the Dalai Lama, and presented to India. The relic was in the Patna Museum for a long time but was moved to a newly built memorial hall in Nalanda in 2007. The Wenshu Monastery in Chengdu, Sichuan Province also claims to have part of Zanzang's skull. Part of Zanzang's remains were taken from Nanjing by soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army in 1942, and are now enshrined at Yakushi-ji in Nara, Japan. Topic works topic See also topic Notes topic References topic Citations topic Works cited topic Further reading Bot, R. B., and Wu, C. 2014. Zan Zhang's Mission to the West with Monkey King. New Delhi, Aditya Prakashan, 2014. Sen, T. 2006. The Travel Records of Chinese Pilgrims Faxian, Zanzong, and Yijing, Education About Asia 11 24-33 Wirawardane, Prasani Journey to the West, Dusty Roads, Stormy Seas and Transcendence, Biblioasia 5 14-18 Kehar Bharat 2000. The Uyghur Turkic Biography of the 7th Century Chinese Buddhist Pilgrim Zanzong, 9th and 10th Chapters. Indiana University, Research Institute for Inner Asian Studies. ISBN 978-0-933070-46-2. Jane, Sandhya, and Jane, Meenakshi 2011. The India They Saw, Foreign Accounts. New Delhi, Ocean Books. Topic external links Media related to Zanzong at Wikimedia Commons Hyuan Sang A Poem on Zanzong in Asia Literary Review by Indian Poet Diplomat Abhay K A Tour of Hyuan Sang Museum Nalanda A Video Tour of Zanzong Museum Nalanda Zanzong Memorial, Nava Nalanda Mahavihara on Google Cultural Institute Details of Zanzang's Life and Works Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy History of Sanzang A Narration of Zanzang's Journey to India Da CNC San Kang Fa Shi Chuan Quan Wen. Archived from the original on 13 February 2005. Chinese Text of the Life of Hyuan T. Siang, by Shaman Monk Hwui Li Wei Li Sha Men Wei Li Verses Delineating the Eight Consciousnesses by Tripitaka Master Zanzong of the Tang Dynasty, Translation and Explanation by Ronald Epstein 1986.